Hi, it's Lynn from Bypass to a Leaner Lynn. How's everybody today? I am great. I am six days post-op. I'm not going to do any stats today because other than I weighed 279 when I had my um, surgery day. I finally know my surgery weight. But at any rate, I'm just going to go ahead and brief you on the hospital. And this is probably going to be kind of a long video, but... There's a lot to talk about in, in in six days. I mean, really. But at any rate, um, my surgery was October 17, 2017 at Merritt Health River Oaks. My surgeon was Dr. David Carroll. And it was an overall good experience. I, I You know, all those worries I had before probably were just worries. I'm going to leave my glasses on because I've made a list here on my phone so that I can kind of keep track of where I am and maybe not ramble too much. I can try anyway. But at any rate, that's why I'm not going to weigh in and I'll weigh my first time when I go to my first post-op appointment this coming Wednesday. Um, I woke up, My I had to be at the hospital at 6 a.m. Uh, turned out I was the very first surgery of the day, so that was good. Get her done, get it out of the way. Um, so I got up about 4.15 in the morning, took my shower, Dreamed of having coffee. <laughs> Dreamed of food. Looked at all the fast food restaurants on the way to the hospital and said, Oh, that all looks so good. I know KFC isn't open right now, but gee, some would be really, really good right about now. Oh, my goodness. You, you'd have thought I was starving to death. And I thought I was. I was pretty hungry. Um, so I got to the hospital, got checked in very quickly, was taken back to a pre-op room, stripped down to nothing except for the surgical gown, which I knew would come off once I was in surgery. Um, my minister got there before I did. Um, while we were waiting on everything to go, we went ahead and decided you know, so we wouldn't be interrupted that we would go ahead and do the praying and everything. And the minister said a real, real sweet prayer. And I just so appreciated his being there. Um, and then the doctor came in and he said, you know, are you ready for this? Do you have any more questions? And I really didn't. I just, I, I think I was just so nervous by that point in time that I just, my mind was blank. Um, my, and of course my sister took me. I think I had told you that before. My sister was going to take me to the hospital and everything. Um, met the anesthesiologist. He was real nice, real pleasant, and seemed to know what he was doing. Looked in my mouth. Saw my mouth, whoopee. <laughs> um, oh, and when I first got there, I parked right next. Or I didn't park, my sister parked because I wasn't driving. But my sister parked right next to one of the girls who was having her surgery the same day and she was in my pre-op class. And so we got there together, but apparently she was after me, although they took her back before me, but she signed in. She got to the check to the check in desk faster than I did, I guess basically. Um uh, they now very quickly, right around twenty five after seven, they showed up, wheeled me into the OR suite, put a mask on my face and I don't remember anything after that. It was all over but the tears. Um, I woke up in recovery and the pain was pretty bad. I, I 
have to say I've heard some say it didn't hurt, but I just don't know how. I thought I was going to die of the pain and they kept asking me, what, what is your pain level? And I was like, I hate it when they want a number. I feel like, well, if I say a number too high, they're going to think I'm exaggerating. And if I say a number too low, they're not going to give me enough to do me any good. And I mean, to be honest, it was at least a nine, but I kept saying an eight. Um, and they gave me three or four shots of morphine and it just did not really do a whole lot of good. I just hurt. Um, but I survived. So you can survive pain. Um, then apparently they had me, they had, they just got in these bariatric beds. And you could have fit me and somebody else in this bed. And I am not a small person. But, and the people that were driving, <laughs> driving the bed when they took me to my room, I think they bumped into everything and they kept, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm like, and I, I was just, I was hurting and I was groaning and I was not really appreciative of this trip. And apparently the, the hospital has been built in several sections and the section that they had to take me through to get to the surgical floor was uh, an addition that they put on to get from one building to the other building and so you kept going over these bumps and over these bumps and over these bumps and and then they tried getting me on the elevator and they couldn't get the th they could barely get the bed into the elevator doors and bumped me and it hurt 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 so I really I re that, that part was not fun but uh Got me to my room, and then they, you know, asked me what my pain level was, and I'm like, it's an eight. I hurt, I hurt, I hurt. And they gave me Dilaudid, and that worked. Praise God. Um, I mean, I, I, was, I, I don't think I was pain-free the entire time I was in the hospital, but it was tolerable pain, you know. It was, you could, you could make it through that pain, you know. Um, I never really, I guess I just wake up quickly from anesthesia because I really never, once I got back to my room, I was awake. And the Dilaudid would make me sleepy when it would first kick in, but it didn't last long and then I'd be back to being awake again. My sister would complain. She said, Darn, I think you'd be all dopey from the anesthesia and take a nap, and instead all you wanted to do was talk. I wanted to take a nap. Oh, well, she didn't. I didn't. Nobody did. Um, mouth was so dry. I just, I mean, my, I was so dry, my, and it wasn't, I didn't have a whole lot of throat pain from the, the tube they put down your throat to help you breathe uh it was just more like my throat was so dry it hurt to swallow and uh ugh. i hated the catheter really hated the catheter um but then i knew i would so it was that wasn't a surprise i could have lived without it but apparently the doctor didn't think I could, so I had a catheter. Um, and I didn't wait maybe but about an hour after they got me back to the room and I was asking to get up and walk. And really it wasn't because I wanted to get up and walk. I just was hoping it would make me feel better. And it did. Getting up and moving around and everything, it helped. And I walked about three times that day. But they, you know, when I first asked to walk, they, they were all kind of like, really? You really want to get up and walk? And I was like, yeah, it'll make me feel better. You know, because it didn't feel too whoopy. Anything that'll make you feel better, I'm, I'm more than willing to go for now. 
Uh, so I, I got up and I walked quickly. Uh, had it had a so so nice. I really didn't get a whole lot of. I didn't sleep the night before very much because I was nervous about the about the surgery. So Monday night was kind of a wash, and then I woke up every couple hours, and then I'd have to wait for my painkillers because the the Dilaudid was every three hours. And it would last right up about two hours, and then about that third hour, it would it get it would get tough. Um, so I didn't get a lot of sleep. My doctor came in at six thirty in the morning and looked pretty cheerful for six thirty in the morning. Uh, said that the blood that they had taken, I was I was kind of low on potassium, so he wanted to change out my IV fluids so that it would have potassium in it. Um, so that, that's a story coming up. It's, it's, it's a story. Um, and then, oh, wait, I forgot to tell you, I'm not at home. I'm at my sister's house still. And so that says faith. I know it's, I think it's backwards for you. Um, but, uh, I'm at her house. It took me a while to find a place. Where I could actually sit and video. I waited this long to video because I don't really like to do it in front of other people. So I waited. They're both at work right now. My sister and my brother-in-law. But I really am so, so grateful for their hospitality. Um, but at any rate, woke up the next morning and saw my doctor. And then... They took me down for the barium swallow test to make sure there were no leaks. Oh my gosh, that stuff they made me swallow. I thought I would barf. I've had a barium swallow and it was the chalky stuff. You know, it's just kind of distasteful, but this stuff they made me swallow was, oh my gosh, bitter, bitter, bitter. And they couldn't have put enough sweetener in it to make it taste sweet. Oh, my God. I think it was supposed to be cherry flavor. I think it just made it worse. It was nasty. And they finally got that done. And, and what I really love was, you know, you have to take that swallow. You, 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 you have to drink some. And it wasn't a lot because, of course, you can't drink a lot. And which I thought that would ease other people's minds that have to have that. I had visions that I was going to have to drink all this stuff, you know. And I was like, will I be able to do that after the surgery? But it, was, it really was just a little bit. And it still took forever to get it down, though. It was nasty and you couldn't, can't sit but a little. and ugh. But it was doable. So then they got me up on the machine to do the do the actual swallow test, and that was a step. Two on a freshly surgitized body, <laughs> but uh, but at any rate, the the radiologist says, "Okay, now take a drink." And I take a drink, and he said, "I'm sorry, but you're going to have to do one more drink." And so I did, and it was finally over. And so they put me back in the wheelchair and were going to take me back up to my room. And they had, uh, there was another girl there, and I think it was my pre-op classmate, but she, she looked rough. I mean, way rougher than me. I was like, gee, I'm doing pretty well compared to her, and she's half my age. I really thought she'd do a lot better than that. And I'm not sure it was her. She had her head all down, so I really couldn't see her face or anything. But I think it was her. Bless her heart. She was feeling awful. So when I got back to the room, I had breakfast. They gave me apple juice and jello. The apple juice was pure nasty. I mean, I don't know what. I like apple juice. I did like apple juice, but I didn't like apple juice in the hospital. It was just, eh, didn't like it. I don't know what it was. I've never found something like that. It just, it just.
just didn't like it. And but the Jello tasted good. I enjoyed the Jello. It wasn't very much, but it filled me right up. Um, and then you know the morning passed, and I walked several times. And by that time, and they took my catheter out, which I was so happy they did. And so that made it a lot easier. I was able to get into my pajamas. My 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 um woke up awesome all the nurses appreciated my pajamas <laughs> um but i got up several times and walked and what i would walk a little bit further each time so i was making progress uh lunch came and it was some more apple juice which i didn't drink obviously and then um and then uh, uh i lost my train of thought i'm sorry um it had had that had the jello next to the plate and then there was this big huge plate and i'm like what could they have on that big huge plate i can't eat that much and my sister lifts the lid up and it is one of the li those little medicine cups in the middle of this huge plate with soup, broth, broth. And I'm like, whoa, yeah. big plate, little bit of soup. I, it, I'm like, oh, they're making me laugh and it hurts to laugh. Can't laugh, don't make me laugh. <laughs> but, uh. It was it, it it was it was pretty gnarly, <laughs> uh, but uh, then they came to try to change out my IV bag, and they did. And I was walking, and my nurse came on, and she said, "Well, let me check your IV." And my arm had just started to get a little puffy, and it wasn't hurting or anything. I was fine with it. She said, oh, we're going to have to take that IV out and put in another one because it's starting to swell. And I'm like, okay. So when I got back from my walk, she came in with, came in with the accoutrements and could not get an IV started anywhere. They kept saying my veins were so small. And I guess that's maybe that's a side effect of being too bad. I don't know. Seems like it'd be the opposite. But at any rate, so then she got her supervisor to come in and try to put an IV in, and that didn't work. They finally got somebody from the ER to come put an IV in. And this is the results of all those IVs. That's some of the places they tried they tried three or four there i thought they tried one in my hand but it's not bruised so i don't know and then they tried some in this wrist didn't work so finally the er guy put it in right there in the crook of my arm and if they could have found a worse place to put an iv i don't know what it would have been every time i couldn't bend my arm at all because every time Two things would happen when I bent my arm. Number one, it would poke and it would hurt. Not horribly, but it would hurt. And then it would make my IV not run. And so then the IV would be beeping at me. Beep, 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 beep. And I lived all night long with the other machine that they had me hooked up for my blood pressure and my pulse and my oxygen levels. And that beeped all night because my oxygen kept dropping. <sighs> I just... <sighs> Who needs it? I hate beeping. Beeping drives me nuts. And it would beep. And so I'd have to straighten my arm out. I try to be writing a response to somebody on YouTube. Because I really, the first, the first day, I didn't... I don't know that I even really... I just kind of laid there i guess and i really wasn't in the mood for getting my computer out or or doing anything really so i it wasn't until the next afternoon that i got my computer out. but i'd be sitting there trying to type a response to somebody 
and I, I, I couldn't because I couldn't bend my arm. I mean, and it was in my right, and it was in my right arm, and I am right-sided. If you cut my left side off, I probably wouldn't know the difference. I mean, really. So that was just not fun. Ooh, this is 20 minutes long. Folks, I gotta hurry. The, the nutritionist came by and visited, and I think she gave me dirty looks because of the apple juice. But I might have just been misinterpreting. That evening, they changed me to hyd liquid hydrocodone. I kind of missed the Dilata. They, you know, they'd ask me, well, what's your pain level? And I couldn't lie and say it was horrible because it really wasn't. It was just that it was nighttime and it would make me sleeping. I thought maybe it would help me get a good night's sleep seeing as I didn't get a good night the night before or the night before that. I was just ready for a good night's sleep. But they wouldn't let me have any more Dilaudid unless I got just really horribly in pain, which I wasn't. I didn't. Um, but, uh, and they didn't tell me I had something that for, for helping me sleep, which I finally took that when they finally let me know. Um, so the next morning was a real quick discharge. The doctor had already signed off on everything. The, his nurse practitioner had signed off on everything. The nutritionist had signed off on everything. So I was good to go. So I, le I left, my sister got there about nine because they said it'd be about nine to 10. And I was, when they said I could go, I was packed up and ready to go. I was ready to get out of Dodge. Um, so I went home. I've been walking a lot. Uh, the neighborhood that my sister lives in, they do have sidewalks. And so I've been able to walk outside. And uh, mostly in the evening because it's been so hot during the day. But now we had a cold front come through yesterday. So I went out and walked this morning. And I walked a good 3,500 steps this morning. And I'll probably do that a couple of more times today. Um, we've been, I, the day after I got back, I wanted, there was some stuff that the nutrition that ha, nutritionist had mentioned in our pre-op class. It's called liquid protein gold or something like that. It was supposed to, supposed to have a lot of protein and I thought it was something you'd mix in a, in your water or something you know and make it you know sort of like the premier protein water you know but no and it was nasty I've had one dose of that it took me all afternoon to drink it and every sip was torture and I was like no, I don't need my protein this bad. No, no, no. So, I have, I tried just doing it plain and getting it over with and uh, just can't do it. So, there's a $35 purchase down the drain. I guess I could try taking it back and said, I'm sorry, but this stuff is nasty. You can have it back. But I would feel bad doing that. Um... But at any rate, we went from there to my sister needed to pick up some things in Hobby Lobby. So I just sat in the car because I had no interest in, you know, I didn't really want to deplete all my energy stores to do that because I still needed to go to Walmart. And she came out and the car wouldn't start. So we ended up, I had to call roadside assistance. They came and started me. My brother-in-law came too and he said, you need to go by AutoZone and get a battery or have them check the battery. And I said, I'm just going to have them put a new battery in because, you know, it's just not worth worrying about whether my car is going to start or not, you know. And uh, so we went by there. Then it turned out they couldn't put it in because of some do floppy flipper that had to be so we're all ready to go try to take it to uh, some place to get the battery put in. And this guy comes out and apparently he, he, he wasn't in point. He said, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I can put your battery in. Did it for free just out of the goodness of his heart. And I was so, so appreciative. And we did give him some money. And... uh 
uh, what little cash we had, but just how sweet can somebody be? I just, I was just so sick. And, and he didn't have to do that. He wasn't working that day. He was off. And, you know, you, you, you start losing faith in mankind because you hear of all the crappy things that happen on TV. And then you have somebody come and just do something like that for you. And you realize that not everybody is a turd. I guess is the best way I can say it. Um, so, but that was an expensive trip. And we did end up going to Walmart. Uh, went to Walmart again on Saturday. I don't make long trips, but I can make little trips. Um, and then, well, that's really all I got. Uh, sorry this was so long, but it, it a lot's happened in six days. Um, I am feeling great. I really have very little surgery pain. My biggest complaint is I am still so, so gassy. And I've been having a pain right in here. It seems like I get air somewhere and it just goes to my shoulder. And, and it'll hurt, but it just lasts a couple of seconds. So it's not, you know, like it's anything horrible. And I'll talk to the surgeon and maybe because when he he did find a very large hiatal hernia when he did the surgery and he repaired that so that's taken care of um but other than that i am doing absolutely awesome i just i feel good um i i've been getting i've gotten my fluids in two days in a row i've got 64 ounces in it's been a tr it's been a trick but i've been doing it sip 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 all day long one could get tired of sipping but i've done it haven't got my protein in i don't think i've even come close i think i had maybe 30 grams of protein yesterday and it's not from lack of trying it's just on clear liquids there's not that much that have got, that got that much protein that you can drink now today i went ahead and i had a premier protein for breakfast so that's got me already up to 30 grams so i'm optimistic that maybe today i can make it i may just have to drink another one this afternoon or maybe i've got some protein shakes that i can make and they've got i think they've got like 20 grams of protein so that ought to put me close anyway i'm trying um but i'm doing great i wish blessings on all of you thank you so much for the support um if you have any questions ask me subscribe always can use a few more subscribers and i just hope that my story can can affect somebody else positively and i just love you all love you all really blessings blessings blessings